Hello there biology students and welcome to this video covering basic energy flow through an environment. The topics that we're going to look at today include a primary description of energy flow through a basic environment or an ecosystem, uh, trophic levels, so we'll go into more specifics about energy existing at certain levels of ecology um, or certain feeding levels if you will. Uh, we'll also talk about the difference between a food chain and a food web. And the fourth and final topic that we'll cover is going to be about energy pyramids, okay, uh, biomass, and the imperfect transfer of energy from level to level, okay, and how we can display those with their energy pyramids. First off, though, to talk about the primary flow of energy, let's head outside. Okay, I'm out here in the front lawn of the high school. And I just wanted to quickly talk to you about a little bit of just how the energy flows naturally through this environment. The main source of all this energy is right up there in the sky, our sun. And you can kind of see it right now behind the clouds. It's an inorganic source of energy, solar light energy that's being accepted by that guy right there and this stuff that's all across the ground. Okay, so inside the leaves of these plants is a special little chemical known as chlorophyll and that chlorophyll catches that sunlight and that solar energy and through the process of photosynthesis generates chemical usable energy that we call glucose. Okay, that's its simplest form. Alright, so stuff like these, this grass right here, the flowers across in that yard, the trees over there, the trees in the park, all of those items are considered to be producers. They are producing the basic foundational level of chemical energy for all life on this planet. So the major niche of a plant is not to create oxygen. The major niche of a plant is to create organic energy, consumable energy by living things. Okay? There are other levels here of energy flow. This guy's producing it from inorganic means, but there's also other organisms that are eating this guy right here because they can't produce it for themselves. So there's consumers that are living on these leaves, consumers that are living on this grass, consuming the grass. Those are primary or first level consumers. These are primary or first level producers, okay? Autotrophs. Then we have organisms that are eating the organisms that are eating the producers. We call those secondary consumers. Okay, secondary consumers, and every now and then you can get to a third level, tertiary consumers. So that's a little bit there about energy flow. <clears throat> okay, so a good amount of information there in that short little clip talking about energy flow through an environment. We're going to get a little more detailed now, and we're going to help describe some of that information with different terms found to describe trophic levels. A trophic level or a trophic level or a trophic level, essentially means, a couple ways to say it there, feeding level, okay? So if you are a plant, or you're some other type of organism that can generate your own organic fuel, your own chemical energy, such as glucose, like plants do with photosynthesis, you're considered an autotroph, or a producer. Troph, again, referring to feeding level, auto referring to self, self-feeding level, autotrophic, autotroph and you're a producer for a certain type of environment or ecosystem. You're the actual organism that is absorbing that light solar energy and by the process of photosynthesis or some other chemoautotrophic process, you are creating organic energy that you can sustain your life with and also others as they consume you. So the first level is the producer level. It's full with autotrophs, most notably plants. The second level are the consumers. And we can have a few different levels of consumers. A lot of times the first level of consumers or our primary consumers are called herbivores. They only eat plants. Now we can have another level above them, secondary consumers. And those secondary consumers may be omnivores or carnivores where they eat only other flesh provided by other organisms that are at the primary consumer level, or they eat both primary producers and primary consumers. So they eat plant and flesh material. That's what an omnivore is. Carnivore, only flesh. Occasionally we can get a third level as well in terms of energy flow, 
if we're talking the trophic levels, and that's the tertiary consumers or third level consumers. Okay, and again, they could be carnivores or omnivores. Having a little bit of that vocabulary knowledge to team with general energy flow through an ecosystem is important if you're looking to describe a food chain or a food web. A food chain is essentially the direct transfer from one organism to the next, advancing through the trophic levels, where a food web intertwines several food chains within an environment or an ecosystem. A pretty clear-cut difference. Food chains, talking about just the beginning to end through just individual organisms at each level, whereas a food web displays how if you're a secondary consumer, you may have several different arrows pointing to you in terms of where you get your energy from. Because you may eat several different species of plants. You may eat several different species of herbivores. And you may be the food source for several different species of third level consumers. So a food web is several interconnected food chains. Last but not least, energy pyramids. Another way to visually display the transfer of energy organic, chemical, life-sustaining energy at the cellular level through the different organizations and levels of an ecosystem or an environment. An energy pyramid is going to start off with the primary producers, okay? your autotrophs. And it's typically going to be very, very big and broad because that's where the most energy resides. All right? Plants are really efficient. A lot of the energy that they get from the sun, it's not lost. It's turned into that chemical energy, but some of it is lost. Some of it's lost as a byproduct of heat because any chemical reaction that takes place is generating heat, and it's not 100% efficient. So plants are going to be the largest category here for an energy pyramid, so they're going to sit at the bottom. That's where the majority of energy is housed. Typically, any type of environment, any type of environment that's displaying energy flow, you can only advance roughly 10% from one level to the next. So our primary consumers, they're going to be 10% of the size of the primary producers. There's only going to be 10% amount of energy that was residing at the very bottom level, residing at the second level. There's also going to be a lot less of those organisms because they have to obtain so much energy from the initial level to carry out their daily functions. Above them would be the secondary consumers, and it's going to be only 10% of size of the second level of the primary consumers. And again, a lot smaller in terms of species diversity and species amount because they're not getting as much energy from that second level. Okay? It's a really cutthroat world. And then we can move up to the very top of the pyramid, which would be your tertiary consumers. And again, 10% of the level that was below it so we're even smaller at the top there for tertiary consumers because there's just not that much energy right below it to pull from to sustain large numbers of species and large diversity. Okay? So the rule of thumb here for energy pyramids is that you are losing 10% or you're only maintaining, you're losing 90%, only maintaining 10% energy from level to level. So at the very end, you're looking at 0.1% efficiency. Okay? Tertiary consumers have 0.1% of the energy that was provided at that initial bottom level of an energy pyramid. Where does all that energy go? A lot of it's lost as heat, some of it is lost as waste, but again the way nature works there's just not enough species and not enough species diversity to encompass all of those feeding levels and make them work and an increased level of efficiency. That's it for this video. That's our basic information covering energy flow through an environment or an ecosystem. Check you later.